Magma runs, but I don't think they'd run that so far in deep. No, they, and then they've only played DP once for Faith Beyond. Yep. Uh, but again, the flexibility still it's there. We know that PSGLGD is a versatile team, so mm -hmm. they probably run uh, multiple, run in multiple ways. Remaining. Are we expecting the Pango then being a Tim's Pango Tim position MC four? We, we saw we saw him play yesterday as well, and I feel like. PSG that would push LGBs Mag as the offlaner, leaving us looking for a Gabby hero for them. And that's also what PSG LCD is thinking, considering they are banning out Terrorblade. Uh, we have TNC banning out the Medusa. Yeah, I think in PSG's position, <coughs> because they don't have ultimate last pick, they mm -hmm. should just ban heroes that are like big win Ten condition. Seconds, because if TNC remain. want to go for a Mag carry, it's all about PNC execution and finesse. Predators, and of course, PSG, they have ban. the confidence playing into this style, because mm -hmm. they are very good at kind of turtling up and... That's why they are putting a little bit more emphasis on banning carries and allowing TNC this their creativity in their draft. Yeah, there's like every single carry ban right now. Loads of them. Juggernaut's still in. You mentioned him earlier, PA. Obviously still combinations with the, uh, with the mag. Five but uh, seconds we're definitely uh, getting a smaller pool. Where are Wraith King still in? Is it one of the usual suspects, I guess? Wraith King? PSG so so Wraith King is like their comfort, but yeah. the, the problem with Wraith King is like, D Death Prophet, DK, like these heroes are so easily able to just kill him after the ult. It's like, it's not like you're popping something on the Wraith King and then, okay, he comes back alive and then they don't have it up. Like the Death Prophet ult will still go. Mm. The, the, the DK stun is going to be Ten on a, a central low remaining. cooldown that you can kill him when it's up. So that's the only thing is, but, but you know, with the mag, Five you've got the big crit. Remaining. Like that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem that bad. Did it just go for like a, like a morphling sign here? Just go for one more hero that likes playing, like, healing-esque, enabled by the hill, higher value. There's not a lot of like instant damage, it's more kind of like control and slow ticking damage where Morphling can thrive and... TNC Predators, turn... Okay. Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker. Wow. Bloodseeker, oh. okay. Did not sure. see that coming. I'm, I'm talking about like some win condition, like, nope, let's fight, let's go, let's just get out. And now they have Bloodseeker versus Pangolier, of course. This Pango will not have a fun time. As soon as no. he rolls up, he gets ruptured, he's out of the fight. But isn't that a good thing if it's a Pango four? It's like, yeah, true. yeah you definitely. Know? Yeah, it's it's not it, when you're a support pango and the enemy picks blood secrets. Like, okay, whatever. Five yeah, you don't you don't really care that much. But that means that it basically mm. does guarantee this probably will be a Tim's pango. Yeah, which is which is nice. That means you know the lane is easy for blood seeker because what the hell does a pango four do? You're just always gonna go Fantastic. even in the lane. Always playing yes, a four anyway. and then you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 The Mag PA combo. I've been just waiting to see who picks up what to get some more clarity. We got a position for Winter Wyvern. Uh, nothing really spectacular other than it's nothing to say on the oh, Death Prophet and the is DK really is on the off lane. Uh, while on the side of TNC, they are awaiting with picking up. Oh, there we go. We got the Mag off lane, the RML Puck mid. Yeah, and the Tim's Pango. Nothing too surprising kind of expect, there. Then. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the one that is uh, expected. So, do we have a favorite? I think this PA pick, it does put a lot of emphasis on early fighting, but it can easily be dismantled by really good positioning of Wyvern, because you're not going to be blowing up like DP once she gets like a plate mail, or you're not really blowing up the DK, so it can be like an awkward game for the PA. Um, but yeah, I think they, they do have good game once they get over that hurdle, a couple more items, they're good. Yeah, I think I think TNC. If the game does somehow go late, yep. they mm -hmm. obliterate yeah. LGD. Okay. I, I think it's that's not even remotely close to, to the late game. Over, yeah. Right? yeah, But with that being said, LGD with DK Death Prophet, Enchantress. I mean, these are insane pushing heroes. Mm -hmm. So I would just give the edge to L to LGD that I think they're a more structured team, mm -hmm. and that with this pushing lineup, they will actually be able to close out the game before before PA can get any farm. So for all the, the TNC fans, as long as TNC can defend their towers, even just a little bit, they'll be okay. If they're not losing, they're winning. Yes. For sure. I think the late game's not even close. Yeah. Like, this is one of those okay. interesting games where you've got a Bloodseeker lineup with so much healing that it means you can survive long enough that your enemy will go low. Therefore, the value of Bloodseeker Thirst will go up immensely. So I hope to see a couple big drawn out fights and maybe Bloodseeker, like an MKB plus one, he can actually fight the PA later on as well. Oh, this will be some high octane 20 minute <coughs> fights, really key spell usage to be beautiful long drawn out fights i hear we saw the the kill per minute for both teams pretty high as well and i know two people that are going to be very happy with that maybe their voice is not as much but uh, we will be entertained for sure with cap and ay 
Oh yes, I'm certainly looking forward to this game and uh, this cast, which I'm going to be doing with AUI. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more knowledge than just uh, they're not losing, they're going to be winning. I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, Aoi, maybe you have a, a way to be able to break that down. The Jenkins statement? Oh, yeah. I think he's making stuff up. No, I think it's because, I mean, they have the mag here, right? Typically, yeah. like, you don't beat that combo late game. Yeah. I think uh, LGD, they're already in sort of like an atypical Chinese team. Like, if you look at the, all four Chinese teams at this event, I think LGD are the most special. They have a little bit of the wings magic, I feel like, when I walk mm. in. They'll pick stuff like TA, Drow, Slaughter Cores. Very yeah. non Chinese style. Usually, Chinese Droughts are a robust team fight, can always win a game. Mm -hmm. LGD make crazy moves and they run at you. A very high risk, high reward sort of situations, which is a little bit more focused on faster pace, let's say. And very, very execution yeah. based. Like, right. I think, as an example, like, I think Team Liquid plays a lot of very high execution lineups, which yeah. is why sometimes they're like sink or swoop. Like, they're very poor opposites in their performance. Yes. I think LGD has an element of the, uh, in them. Uh, Blitz has often told me that uh, the way Liquid approaches lineups is that we believe that we'll be able to play this lineup to like the highest degree. It's, it's a hard way to play Dota, to be honest. And, and, and you're saying the Chinese style is sort of opposite of that. And that, that is something what uh, I believe Kyle was kind of talking about whenever he plays it up against Chinese teams. It felt like they were always situated where they were waiting for you to make a mistake. They always had lineups that had a little bit of give and take, you know, they could take some abuse, but once you slipped up, that's when they would be able to punish you. Yeah, I think in general, like, no matter how the game's going, the Chinese teams historically could always end up winning the game. You think yeah. of like these big, like, team fight OTs, I just pristine team fighting skills. Is that something that uh, back when you were on Evil Geniuses, did you guys um, take a bit to that style? Because I do remember EG's style back then was very much having a lot of like that big high ground defense. That those big team fights that could always turn the game. Honestly, I don't even remember. Okay. Like I feel like I should, but like <laughs> I feel like we like the scene was so much less developed then. That's sure. why we were able to win. Yeah. So like. I don't know You're if we so had the humble. same depth of strategy. The scene was less developed. No, That's it's why like Dota's really gotten good. better and better each year. Like, yeah, absolutely. You know, some of these, the plays these players make are absolutely mind blowing. Now, something that is going to be unique about LGD and unique across this tournament is that Nigma has been doing super well um, after day two. They're top of the group stage right now, and they have been the only team so far to employ this offlane DK. And that's something that PSG LGD is going to be trying out here with Faith Beyond. We've been gone on, though. He is taking a lot of damage here. Something they got to be careful. This. Uh, even though he didn't go Lil Shredder, I imagine Lil Shredder plus a PA is going to be a kind of a deadly laning phase combination. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty high armor, so that's probably why he didn't take Lil Shredder. I think the, the QW it gives you more options, not necessarily so the two of you can kill them, but when Pango wants to rotate, because I don't think he'll end up pressuring a Bloodseeker and Chandra's lane. Right. When he wants to rotate, you have like more kill threat. Also, Lil Shredder being nerfed, I believe the, the last yeah, that, match, that's a it bit seems part like more people are trending away from that one. I, we had an interesting conversation during the draft about this uh, Pango 4 position pickup as do you have a bit of training going on back at uh, bottom lane? It looks like they might be able to get the kill here. Shin Q is just setting up for a splinter blast. He knows he's dead. He's just trying to do as much damage before he falls. That's going to be first blood for Gabby. That's a huge kill. And TNT, they've actually done I mean, they've performed really well this tournament. They started the tournament 0-3, to three. Mm -hmm. they picked up, they've gone 5-0, to zero. they have a lot of momentum. And in particular, they play their PA lanes really well. Like, they won with PA Magnus, which is completely unexpected to me. Yeah. I, well, okay, why is that unexpected to you? Well, not, not in the game, but in the lane. I think Magnus is sort of seen as a like, more greedy pick. You're not expecting sure. to win the lane, but you know, you'll, you'll provide enough oh, to the game free. with your Empower, faster farming PA, and high damage that's worth it. However, they got the best of both worlds. They just won the lane and they carried the game. They had like a 20 minute rampage on here or something. They just stomped the life out of Liquid. Yeah. Tim's being pressured right now by Y. It does manage to get the uh, the pole off nonetheless. I, I have to say, I was a little bit surprised um, how many people were doubting TNC. And that's purely because of the fact that I, I got to cast the game where it felt like they turned things around, which was the 1-1 against Vici Gaming. 
And in that game too, I could definitely see that they made adjustments and, and they turned like uh, the way they started playing was different from going from game one to game two. And all of a sudden game two against VG game, they looked fantastic. I was like, oh, this squad is really good. Um, it's funny how these group stages happen because sometimes if you don't see that like one game where a team turns around, your idea of what they are um, may not be correct. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think even anyone who watched our second game versus EG, like they lost that game, mm -hmm. but they looked really good in that game. A lot of their predictions coming to this tournament were one second they're going on bottom. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so aggro. <laughs> he was I love it. So much damage. Yeah. And he's like, nah, I'm going to turn around in this Winter Wyvern now. And it's a good trade, right? Wyvern used all his spells. It's just very, um, it's risk was very calculated. Yeah. I think a lot of predictions about TNT were coming in with like zero information before they played any games. Mm -hmm. They looked a bit shaky their first game with CG, but on that second game, they should have won. Like RTZ just played really well that game, but TNT. They stepped it up even more since then, and yeah. they're looking like one of the best teams to make it out top two in the group with their schedule. Yeah, and uh, this is probably the oh, toughest opponent that they have left, right? Yeah, I think uh, so. Of, uh, of like the top five teams, I think they've played all of them except for OGD right now. Right. And I'd like to see um, the Pangler make a rotation around the five minute catapults this game. Okay. I think. They have some pretty good timings on TNC. I think they're not afraid of TPing in additional heroes to use it. When I think of TNC, I think of a team that's hyper aggressive mm -hmm. and they want to play like that. Like I know they could play this lineup defensive, you know, your Meg PA trying to hold down the fort. Yeah, but sit on the triangle for yeah. 20 minutes and wait for PA to win. Like I think EG would win the game like that. Sure. But I don't think TNC should try to emulate that. They should be themselves because I mean why wouldn't you? They're five and zero in their last games and Every game has been super aggressive. Like, this PA, he's probably gonna go... He has Treads Mask of up. That's super mm -hmm. cool. I thought he was gonna go for an Echo Saber, but I'm also really down for something like that. Like a Mask of Madness, small fighting item type. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting idea. We did watch Tim's fall there as the, uh, the pen go up against uh, Y. And the Enchantress with the help air, nothing major really coming out of that. You can see a nice aggressive ward laid down. Honestly, I think they're okay with what they got on top. I mean, LGD are winning the lane really hard, but as long as you don't feed and you get some levels, I think this is like sort of expected. Big I rotation from nothing to say. He's gotten on top of Gabby. Gabby, he's gonna try. He doesn't have a jump actually, he's just dead. He jukes as long as he can inside of the trees, but uh, with just a really good rotation from this Death Prophet. They kill the carry of TNC and are setting up to be able to take this tower. That's why Armel is already rotating in. He wants to make sure this doesn't actually happen. He's going to try and clear out the creep wave as best as possible. Though LGD wants to back down from this fight, it seems. They're going to now force out the coil from Armel just to be able to save himself. They need more TNC members, though. They're actually going to hop in on Boomy. He's really going to try and do this one. Gabby is now here. He's going to jump onto Faith Beyond. He's so tanky as a Dragonite that he may eventually go down, but it's going to cost TNC a lot. In fact, Faith Beyond doesn't even die. Gabby's now going to find a way out of here. Armel jumps to his orb to be able to stop the healing sound of Faith Beyond, but he's already healthy enough, and Gabby is just going to die a second time. Double kill for Radiant's Innocence, and uh, Armel may have stopped Radiant's this uh, push killed. onto the tower and may be Radiant's able to get the deny, but it was a denied. terrible, terrible trade for them. It just beautiful execution from LGD. I think in that fight, like, they, they managed to rotate the DP for the kill, but their communication is really good because Enchantress is able to follow it up. You saw that Wildkin. That completely changes the dynamic of that fight. Mm -hmm. Moreover, like, I think we're sort of seeing that TNC, their lanes are a little bit shaky. I think they would have wanted to sort of make the first move. Yep. We saw, like, the difference. Like, the... The Puck Coil was defensive, whereas DP was able to use the aggressive exorcism, and as a result, like, this map is looking really good for OGD. Do you think part of that is uh, this Magnus plus Pango off lane? That's right? a really greedy lane, yeah. Yeah, neither one of those heroes is going to do anything for you pre-level 6. Yeah, I was I was actually hoping for like some crazy move where like you coil the guy mid and you have both supports there and you TP a Magnus in or something. Yeah, You'll yeah. Skewer him to break the coil. Like, I think that's a move that they sort of had to make, but it's really hard to coordinate that in the game. Like, you need everything to go out, right? And nothing to say. Like, he's been playing fantastic this tournament. He actually reads it and he makes a move first. Behold, yeah, he really has. Armel, unable to grab what is a double damage rune. Goes to nothing to say in his bottle. Meanwhile, 
Ani is just kind of chilling out here in the top lane. 4,000 net worth lead for him. Uh, he had he didn't even bother to rotate to that bottom lane fight, which I thought was kind of interesting. Maybe he was just so confident that his team was going to win it. I normally imagine Bloodseekers joining engagements like that, but he has just been very focused on uh, continuing to stay top of the net worth board. I think he would have TP'd if the fight went a bit towards his tower, but you have to be really careful with those TPs just because Magnus's Radiant game was so bad, you don't want to get him back into the game. Mm. By staying Radiant's top, he's actually doing a long first team because Magnus doesn't get a game to play. Dyer's and Exo's already up there. Exo and mid, they, they, have, they don't have the DK for him, but there's just so much pressure for LGD and Abe, he's, he's farming up a storm. Bigbeon even just sitting here, Armel, they're gonna spot him out. Now Armel is gonna be forced to jump into the silence, but he actually does use his silence to be able to get just out of range. Rupture damage is coming in, Armel is just on a slumber here. He's got another orb, he's gonna be able to jump away. A beautiful RP from Volk is gonna be able to skewer two heroes into the tier two. But the problem is, Cold and Brace stop much of the damage. And Tims, who's still just a level four panko, doesn't do a damn thing in this team fight. Another shockwave thrown out, which is gonna completely whiff LGD. Once again, putting pressure on TNC and TNC. And he failing to have the kind of uh, uh, firepower to respond. And just such a good, like, um, how LGD rotates our heroes is just so smart. They've given this Bloodseeker a lot of space. He's mm -hmm. going to free farm. He has a little power spike. It doesn't even have to be something big because you're a carry roll. All he has to do is come to his fight, rupture the puck, and push him off this tower. And just by nature of being there as a carry, he secures his team a tower, and it's like this huge swing. Yeah, who, who else is going to kill the creep wave on this line yeah. of TNC? No, like, nobody really does that for you very well. Uh, not under level, that is. And I think the panel is mentioning, like, LGD know that TNC have this late game timing. Mm -hmm. And LGD, I mean, I think they've done the research into TNC. They know how TNC like to play, and they're like, how do you fight into a DK DP Bloodseeker core trio? Yeah. Like that. Yep. They specific, like, why I like LGD so much is their drafts seem very specifically tailored to their opponents. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't have, like, this uh, default that they over index on. And okay. I think it's, a, it's like a very Xiao 8 thing. If the enemy picks Lone we don't need teamfight. We're gonna pick Slaughter, Drow, TA. Mm -hmm. It's very smart. I, I like how they draft. So in that case, let's talk about what TNC should do. Like, you say you can't fight into them. Okay, so what does D TNC do in response? If you were in their position, how would you approach which the rest of this game. So I think right now, it's very hard to move past the river. What they need to do is they need to overwhelm their opponent in some area. Maybe try to take control of the jungle, play on the vision. They're going to get gone on with Gabby here, though. Gabby, they spot him, but the rupture finally comes out as they manage to break that meld. Now, Gabby is going to be jumping over to this tier two area, and it looks like LGD are deeming that off bounds. They're not going to go that far to try and pursue. They just keep him out of his triangle. They block the heart or the ancient camp, make sure it doesn't respawn. Yeah, I think and, uh, their best chance, me. they have they have a good idea what to do in this game, right? Because they place these two jungle... What happened? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, when I say block, I meant body block. Oh, okay. Yeah, they place these two wards in their jungle. I think what they need to do is they need to try to get LGD to feel like they can overextend. Mm -hmm. Maybe they show a bit more top. LGD, they're okay. Like, okay, they're trying to flip the map. Let's go invade their jungle. You already have vision there. You take an overwhelming fight where you bring everyone to the fight and you hit some good spells. Like, that's the only way Radiant you can really come back standing. against, like, a lineup that's ahead and wants to fight you. Okay. So put, like, a PA out there and then Dyer's surprise them tower. with, oh, attack. there's a puck mag behind it and we're going to get yeah. this good combo like, on you or something. For example, why walks into the jungle here? You can imagine, if, maybe if they had a few more heroes there, like mm -hmm. the PSNF are already, you just instantly killed Enchantress, and then all of a sudden you have a disparity in resources on the map because you have one more hero alive. Right. Then you can start running at them, maybe think about like snowballing off a kill, taking territory and getting some deep wards. Right now it's like, they're a bit split. I don't think, I don't think they're feeling Bad desperate hit. yet, so this is why they're not doing what I'm saying. Like, sure. it's not like sure. what I'm saying is absolutely correct. It's, a, it's just like my read on the game, but uh, Maybe they just wait for a timing before doing it. He almost has an Echo Saber on PA. Yeah, I mean, one of the things they were, they were missing previously was uh, level six on the Pango. Like, that support doesn't do anything for you until he has his ultimate. So he's got that now. Uh, he's got the Orb of Corrosion top, top. as well. Under Maybe they're going to wait for, like, Blink Dagger on the Mag. What is Boat going for? Um, I kind of assume that he needs an early blink with a puck, but no, he's actually going to sustain items with a mech. They're going to try and catch him out here, but very smart CP by him. Oh, actually, he winters curse a creep, which was barely in range of the mech. And Shin Q, you goddamn genius. That was amazing. That was such a good play from Shin Q. I thought I was just about to say this Magnus just made the play of the game. He he got his team back into it because they wasted Exo, they wasted DK for him. But Shin Q, he just completely changes the state of the game with one damage coming in over the corner. 
the gray to see if they can first down this Dragonite, and they will. Now they have the Rolling Boulder that's going to be chasing after nothing to say. He swiftly does dodge it. Does manage to put a little bit of drain onto Armel. The cookie actually goes out, gets him out of the drain. Gabby, meanwhile, is unsure if he can commit. Throws out a bit of daggers. Nothing major. TNC probably feeling okay. Just okay, right? We got a good core pickup. Let's not throw this away too much. <laughs> TNC, their read of the game there is really cool because even though LGD killed their offlaner, they committed a lot of resources to do that. They use a the curse, they use XO, they, they actually use three ultimates. Um, they knew that they could defend this tower simply because their three heroes have so much magical damage between the two, the mid hero and the two supports. It's good punish onto the DK there. Yeah. No, they certainly are. Uh... Well, I, I am a bit surprised that uh, Faith Beyond isn't buying any, um, like a cloak, even just a casual cloak this game. It seems like. TNT's read on the game is we're gonna burst heroes like defensively in order to get back into this game. Mm. Yeah, I can kind of see that. The if the wyvern can't really Dyer's initiate is under and attack. there's enough mobility that rupture doesn't like absolutely hold a person in Dyer's place, then they do kind of need that initiation. Top. But yeah, like a hood. Just a straight up hood of defiance would <laughs> make him, I think, near invulnerable in these team fights. I mean, I think the blink is good. He needs to be that frontline initiator for his team, mm -hmm. but he's actually going for a Howard after, which is good this game. I mean, you're against my PA, so physical top. damage is going to be really good. But uh, yeah, I, I would have liked to see just a casual cloak. I think it's an underrated item right now. And look at Jin Kyo. He's just straight going for the Orchid. That's a Dyer's that's a cool build. Top. Very nice. strong. Something that uh, I, I feel like that's been flavor since Ice 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 was experimenting off lane Winter Wyvern, and he was going like I think Orchid was his preferred build at that time. And ever since then, it seems like uh, these four position Wyverns, every, every once in a while, we'll see an Orchid from them uh, since it does pair up so nicely with Winter's Curse. Pretty much, you Winter Curse somebody, you put it on them, the duration is about the same, and it's just going to be resulting in a ton of damage. It's actually a really good defensive item in a lot of ways too, because mm. if you look at Win uh, Winter Warven's game, this, uh, the game for Winter Warven this game, it looks like Puck wants to jump him. But if you have an Orchid, he can't really do that without because of the threat of the item. Yeah, that's true. Same kind of goes with Pango, right? He wants to be able to like swashbuckle you and then roll yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, the same thing there. The silence on those two very oh, mobile like heroes that are typically like support assassins that's sort of their job a lot of your job as a support in dota is not to necessarily live but to make the enemy of course over commit oh okay. they Ooh. had the vision here they just straight up go for the look at young managed to get the stun out that allows the winter curse to be able to go down keeping jq alive the shot oh man he managed to just dodge so much ultimately swash but will finish him off still though focus gonna be falling here boomy actually gets swallowed up by ame who's running around like a madman right now he has built up some serious speed though as people start dying he, the Radiant speed eventually does wear fortified. out. Still, though, great team fight for LGD, and that's all Radiant's off of the fact that Faith Beyond's quick attack. reaction with the blink dagger Dyer's stopped the skewer back. Yeah, then that was really close. I think it was just unfortunate. Like, TNC saw the opportunity. They almost came back into the game there, but Armor actually did have a TP. So a little bit of comes are good reinitiation, though. Yeah, and managed to find the Dragonite once again. Faith Beyond overestimating his tankiness against this magic damage. But he's just, he's just not tanky with this uh, Belt of Giant strength compared to a Cloak. Yeah. Invisibility. <laughs> he's really so weird. He's got a quelling blade. He does. I can sell the quelling blade. Just buy a basic cloak for him, please. I feel like he might go back for a cloak, but honestly, like, I don't want to harp on it too much. He sure. clearly has some idea with it. Sanj is clearly one of the best items of the patch, so it's mm -hmm. hard, that's hard to say. And I mean, he did just save that last team fight. What can we say? Oh, look at this. TNC are really going to try for an early Roshan because they have Pango one of the best heroes against Roshan, being able to provide that disarm. And then they've also got a PA who can sneak into the Roshan pit with them. Did they have the Corrosion? Man, they got this, this, they got is, this, this is clever. They know this is happening. Even though they didn't have vision, they knew this was going on. And uh, while they silenced up, this PA still can't get out of the pit. He's looking to be able to blink away, but Roshan bashed him for a second there. PSG LGD, though, weren't quite ready to engage. Uh, especially since they don't have Exorcism. That's up now. Dragon Form coming up in a few more seconds. And uh, then LGD will be back to full fighting shape. I can't believe LGD read that. Like, it was just such a weird auto place move. Yeah. Like, you just lost a team fight, and you're like, your support and your offline start hitting Roshan, and PA joins it later. But LGD, they just kneel right away. Yeah, LGD, or uh, excuse me. Yeah. Pim, can we see ah. LGD's vision again? It's just this bottom lane, these two LGD. very aggressive boards. They saw nothing there. 
they could have just all been triangle. They could have been maybe playing closer to uh, the top lane farm, but no, they just made the read. Okay, we gotta beware. They can rush on with this lineup. Boomy is gonna be breaking the smoke here from LGD. Let get the stun there. Rolling Thunder is gonna come out though. Hits a couple of heroes, but I don't think they wanna fight to this exorcism. Maybe they do. Armel's actually gunning for it. He's gonna go straight for the Dragon Knight. Magic damage isn't quite enough, but now they have the Mortar Risk. is raining in as well. The Winter's Curse is gonna be able to grab the Mag and pull him over as the Pango was about to finish up the Wyvern. They do manage to get him with the kisses. Why? He's gonna be coming up next as Gabby's gunning for him. Nothing to say. The RP pulls him and Ame together. They're putting out some good cleave damage, but it's not quite enough. The Bloodseeker's fighting through it all. He gets another kill and keeps on healing himself. Nothing to say with the Exorcism still out as well. TNC were so close to wiping LGD, but Ame was just a bit too strong. That was really close. I think he had like a couple hundred HP on Bloodseeker. LGD, they smoked in there with four. I think Ame was coming to join the fight late and the RP barely clipped him. It was just, oh man, one crit and the game changes there, I think. Yeah, seriously. And TNC, they have a good idea though. Like the enemy's coming to your triangle, you're down a lot of gold, but they know they have to stand their ground there. Mm -hmm. They use two buybacks and that, like if they win that fight, that's your way back into the game. I like how they're not trying to like, oh, you know, we have the late game, we're gonna split push, push the side lanes, be scared of our opponent, try to dodge them, because that won't work for Soji D. There's sure. no way, not versus these heroes. They have DK Blink, they have Wyvern Catch, even some Bloodseeker. Instead, like they're taking fights, they're trying to outnumber them with buybacks. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if they don't have, if they have less map control than LGD, but they cannot forfeit their triangle. That's yeah, like the one fortress that you must hold down. For sure. I mean, if the enemy's running in, not bringing everyone, or you think you have a, like even a hint of a good fight, like you should take a risk, seize the opportunity, you're behind. And TNC, I like what they're doing. You know, they went for that Roshan. They tried to hold their high ground. They're taking risk to try to come back in this game. And that's a mark of a good team. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really good. Good. Team double damage. Everyone's going to be fighting over that one. Armel's going to be grabbing up, but he already got stunned up. And now he's going to be silenced up as well. Oh, this puck is in trouble. The Rolling Thunder tries to get the intercept, but Armel ultimately does die. Now it's Ame. Oh, they managed to get the Winter's Curse on the Rolling Boulder with the uh, the PA right next to him. So they're both very likely to fall here. Sure enough, they do. And that low health allows Ame to be able to chase down Boomy. Gets that extra. Extra plus one kill. Four down on the side of TNC, just outside of the Roshan pit. Jin Kyo is just playing these fights like a monster. Perfect silence. He he gets a save off of his enchantress. You know, sometimes you're scared to save her. She's getting rolled up. Saves her. He gets a perfect curse. He just, he's making Wyvern look like a tier one hero. Yeah, seriously. I mean, this is, it's it's very rare to see Wyvern before this tournament. I felt like it was only popping up every once in a while in the DPC matches. Sometimes it'd be five, occasionally four, but you're right. Jin Q is making a good argument that this is a top tier support hero. He's higher farm than the enemy offlaner. I feel like after this game, I mean, I'm not going to execute as well, but when I say Magnus, I just want to pick this hero and try to play like Jin Q does. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Crazy stuff. Look at him. He's even going for the Witchblade now. So just yeah, even more damage that he can throw out during a Winter's Curse combo. Like, this is very rapidly going to turn into... He's going for a Shadow Blade. Oh, is he? Oh, he's going for a Shadow Blade. I had my phone over it. Yeah. I just saw the... because no, even so the unexpected. <laughs> That's crazy. The idea is super cool, though, because yeah. as we were mentioning earlier, uh, Radiant's game plan on TNC is just to find his Wyvern and kill him. You cannot let him get saves off. You cannot let him get Curse off mm -hmm. versus an AKA lineup. If you have a Shadow Blade, all of a sudden, like... I mean, he, he won't be found. It's just impossible. Yeah. Kaya for the Death Prophet now. Man, this Bloodseeker, he's... He only has, like... When you think of Bloodseeker, you don't really think of these hard carry heroes. Yep. But I think he's shown in these fights, like, he will hard carry the fight, and he's mm -hmm. itemizing for that. He's got Maelstrom, SOI Satanic, the classic, like, I will 1v5 this game build. And it's paying dividends. He's, he has his Aegis. I don't know how they're supposed to kill him twice at this point. I think right now, TNC need to look... Like, I didn't want them to split push the sidelines before because they're only a Radiant's little bit behind and could still fight with buybacks. At this point, I think you have to force all a bad TP from LGD or get a fight into your two forwards in order to win this game. Yeah, sadly, they're gonna have to uh, do that without Gabby as he does get fully rotated on by LGD. TNC is beginning to go from that sort of desperate split push style where you know you're down and you're down bad. Yeah, and it's hard. The LGD heroes, they don't seem like they're that good at catching, like maybe the DK, but just by the nature of how they get to push waves with like their supports on Wyvern and Edge, it's really easy to catch people. And look at he's got the Pango. Managed to get him with the Orchid. They're going for him. Tim's, he's going to be able to back out with just a swashbuckle, but he is going to have to run away scared. Four creeps 
on the pango and he did 1200 damage in his ulti that's terrifying like when he has a shadow blade I, oh i can understand the shadow blade he's uh, he's getting shadow blade because he understands that tnc can no longer fight him mm. so the mm. best way to catch people is just to get a shadow blade and walk around the map invis so you can set up curses yeah they can't split push that's really smart actually yeah just run around jin kill is wrinkly big ring <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, LGD man, they have uh, been a pleasure to watch. I've only been able to to watch maybe about half of the DPC Chinese games, but uh, they're playing really well. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always been surprised to see like why is LGD not at the top of the board? Yeah, same actually. Especially with Xiaoyi coaching them, he's just such yeah. a world class coach. And Faith Beyond, he actually goes back for the hood. Yeah, so yeah, I, I like that. Like you can actually frontline a bit more. I think. At some point in this game, he realized, like, if I frontline, apparently my four position is going to kill everyone. Yep. So <laughs> you don't need to do anything. Even why? Even He's been dishing out some damage. He went for Dyer's a very aggressive build. Top. He only took Zendrin two in his chat, and he maxed out his impetus. No, I've noticed this about um, Nygma employ this as well. When they do the offlane DK, they have two supports that output a lot of damage. Because that is the, the thing about DK is that even as a mid laner, he doesn't do that much. As an off laner, he's just really not going to give you that much damage. But he does give you excellent frontline and excellent uh, single target. Target initiation. Boomy is going to be target here, but no. Yeah, I really like what you said there. Because DK, as a hero, if you look at him, he has a lot of strengths. Oh, TNC, they're trying to seize bottom. They showed a lot of heroes from LGD top. They're doing that thing where they're moving around the map very quickly to try and catch LGD off kilter somewhere. But uh, LGD is wise to it. They back up, and if the TNC's not careful, they're going to get caught here. Nothing to say was hiding in the trees. Now Faith Beyond is back into it. A silence into a stun, and there goes Armel. The rest of TNC has to give up any pretense of a team fight without their mid laner, but the ruptured up on Gabby. He has to go for a TP out. Any stuns? Dragon Tail's not quite there. And it looks like uh, Boak. Okay, they're going to chase him all the way down to the tier three here. The Pango's coming in. Can he roll Thunder stop some of this? They do give the cookie away to Boak, and he managed to skewer himself away to safety. Now, nothing to say. Awkward position, but he managed to juke the stun there. Oh, and Tim's runs into the side of the wall there. He won't be able to pursue after the death profit now that they're outside of the base. TNC, not so sure they can take a team fight anymore. They're going to have to wait for Armel, looks like. Never mind, skew it back into the cookie. Chain stun, beautiful combo. TNC, get the first life of the Bloodseeker and then back up. They're not going to trade anything for that just yet. Puck is almost here. Armel, three seconds if they can slow down these heroes maybe they can get a good coil and still force a good team fight here big beyond threatening to go back in there for a moment it's got the heavens albert so he is very tanky lgd making sure that tnc doesn't feel super comfortable trying to chase them but i think tnc realizes this is an opportunity they have to be able to seize armel jumping forward he's got to be careful of that orchid though he's been caught out by it once before TP away from Boomy, and it looks like PSG LGD managed to hold themselves in a tight enough structure that TNC finds zero weakness to exploit. I love watching these high skill teams team fight. It's just such a dance, you know, they're sort mm -hmm. of coming in, they don't want to overextend, and they're dancing and dancing out, and you know, the moment someone steps out of position, everyone's gonna jump on them and punish them. Yeah. It's just, it's so beautiful. Radiant Shiva's almost done for nothing to say, so more frontline and more tank from the Death Prophet. They do have the Blink RP on Magnus now. I think we saw that in the Skewer last fight, but I think uh, it's so hard to push forward on the map as TNC. I think they might be stuck at this point to hoping LGD mass up. And oh, yes, this is that combo, that single target combo, Winter Wyvern. Not, no longer just a defensive reactive support. The way Jin Q has built it, he is now an active hunter in the game. This Wyvern build is just, it's stopping TNC's ability to come back into this game. Because usually when you're behind, what you want to do is you want to play side lanes. You push mm -hmm. out your side lanes, force the enemy team to mess up, maybe use a TP, react to you, and then collapse on them somewhere else. However, you can't push side lanes if it's an enemy four killing you. Like, they're not even bringing their big heroes. Yeah. And on top of that, like, nothing to say has bots. If, if this Wyvern catches a core, like, they will bot in and they will kill that guy. As a result, LGD sitting on a 14,000 net worth lead. TNC, 
Citadel does have the comeback potential just because it's PA Magnus. They've got sure. a lot of team fight. They've got the big late game hero, but it is a dark and dreary game for them indeed. And uh, he has his BKB and PA now. That is one comeback potential. If they can get a really good RP, like you can always win with this combo. I don't care how much gold you're down. Yeah, especially with coil as well, right? Yeah, RP, sure. coil on top, Dyer's skewer them out of the coil to snap attack. it, do even more damage, more stun time. And Pango actually has his blink too, if he wants to buy it here. That's another, like, for Magnus to get a good RP, they need someone to go in. I think that's a lot of why they picked the Pangolier. He can roll in. He doesn't even have to hit a lot of heroes, but the chaos he creates will cause Magnus to get a good RP. He's just kind of like, look at me, look at me, and then all of a sudden Mag Radiant's is like, ah, I found my opening. Man, you see Faith Beyond, I love his idea for this game. He's going for a force staff because he understands that even though he's the off laner, He's just for utility. Oh, yeah. Jinkyo with the Shadow Blade bottom, though. Jinkyo's hunting. He's gonna find Gabby. Spots him out. Winter's Curse and working immediately. They do have the Blood Seekers coming in, but there's other heroes of TNT here as well. Gabby actually gonna use his BKB and he completes the TP. That was actually very disciplined of him. You see a two man RP like that, I thought for a second he was gonna cancel the TP and try and fight, but that would have ultimately been a disaster. TNC used the opportunity to just get a clean escape. Yeah, that was 100% co the correct choice to TP out there. I think if he stays, he dies for sure, they lose the game. Just good decision making from them. Honestly, even the RP, like, it's... It looks weird, but you have to make sure your PA doesn't die and they, like, you don't get over... Um, I mean, you'll just straight up lose the game if you lose heroes there. Yeah, absolutely. In that short of time, snap judgment, but wasn't a bad call from Boak whatsoever. And Armel, oh, catching him with the blink Dragon Tail stun. Dragon Knight's just so good against Puck. The Spellseeker hits so hard. He, uh, he, he even has like a, the armor talent. He didn't take the Blood Rage attack speed. Oh, really? Which I think is correct. I mean, you're against Meg PA. Yeah. yeah, that Puck's pretty fast. All right, well, 45 seconds. For Armel, without the puck, kind of feels like this is going to be one lane of barracks at least. But uh, TNC, we're still going to poke at LGD, trying to keep them honest here. Radiance bottom Maybe even slow them down attack. enough that they can't go for a second lane of barracks. Actually, that kill protection came up for a second there. It's too bad they didn't push out mid lane a bit faster. It's so weird. I think Radiant mid lane is the furthest backdoor protection. Um, of all the lanes in Dota. If the creep hits the tier 2, it actually cancels back door protection. Yeah. So that's just unfortunate Radiant for them there. Scanning. That's a... Yeah, that is a very deep line. I normally think about it being where the emblem is. Yeah, no, it's you think about a... it... Like, it should be like when the creeps hit the tier 3 or something. Yeah. Or like 600 range from it. It's like 1200 range at mid or even more. Oh, that's interesting. Man, LGD, they really just did their homework on TNC. I think how they drafted, how they structured the draft. Like, they knew that they don't have to necessarily out carry them late game. They just have to sustain the aggression from TNC, put them off their game a bit. I'm sorry, did I just see an Aether wins on Dragonite? Was that the hero I just saw that on? All right. You, you did. Damn. <laughs> that is cool. Boomy in the pit here. Going to cookie himself out. The SGLG here certainly going to... Oh, what an RP with the cool combo. They're going to be able to skewer and snap a bunch of heroes. Ame's a little bit low. Gabby's going to be able to jump onto him. Can they finally get the kill on the carry of LGD? He actually hits the hard camp to be able to heal himself up with the Satanic and the heal, but it's not enough. Gabby is too big. He actually managed to win that man fight. Down for 80 seconds. LGD is still pursuing, though, with nothing to say, but without the extra, he doesn't do that much damage. They're going to go up for a TP out. But Paul comes right back with a skewer. Gives up his life to be able to stop that TP away from nothing to say. They're just bit by bit poking at these two heroes. Gabby now making the commitment here. Wants to be able to make sure he doesn't die to nothing to say, but he's got the talent. He's throwing out Crip Swarm after Crip Swarm and does manage to kill the carry of TNC. Still trying to get away here. TNC chasing after him. He's out of mana now. They know he's got no more offensive spells, so they're just going to stick onto him as best as possible. And I think they've got him here. Let's switch to Wyvern Jin Teal. He's got to kill him fast. Otherwise, the Winter's Curse is going to be coming in. It goes out, but the Death Prophet's already dead. Armel has slid away. As a result, it looks like Tim's. He may end up dying here. Burning out from the Arctic Burn. He does fall. Armel chasing after Jin Q, though. Has him low enough. Almost finished him off with the cold. The Brace is going to keep him alive. Armel out of spells. He's got a silence up, but he doesn't have the distance right now. Boomy looking to approach. They get the silence. Oh, but he turns around and kills him. Dropping the gem as a result. Jin Q trades himself for Armel. Boomy's on the hump for the gem and a TP away, but I, oh, he doesn't have TP. 
He's gonna have to ju just run his way back. It's a five on five battle right before now for the gem. Let's see if Innocent, oh, he drops a ward just to be able to spot him, but Boomy in turn denies the ward. He takes away the Ghost Scepter with the Enchant, dispels him. The Winter Wyvern's coming over with the Courier to be able to spot him out, instantly picks up the gem to make sure there's no enemy Courier shenanigans and flies away with it, drops the gem to make sure they can kill the ward on the high ground. That was, <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite one-on-ones I've ever seen, and it was a five-on-five -five battle. That was honestly hilarious. And TNC, they're showing their merit in this game. Like, yeah. how they took that fight was insane. They're down 15k gold. I thought they won the game there for a second. Like, Rochan was respawning. Mm -hmm. I got to say, like, props to nothing for say for how he played that team fight. You know, he held his BKB for literally, like, 50 seconds that fight. Wow. It's just such patience, and he got it off. Just because he had that BKB, I think he was able to finish off Gabby. He doesn't do that. I think this game's actually really scary for LGD. Okay, explain this Ether Lens. Is it really just Dragon Tail range? Um, there, there used to be a guy in NA who would go Radiance Octarine Core on Dragonite. Okay. And you would have like 100% uptime on your ultimate. It must be terrible. <laughs> but, but I think I think it's sort of cool in the idea that he has for the game. Like it, it okay. fits the theme where he just wants to be utility. I don't know if it's correct. But, you know, I'm sort of curious about what, why he's doing it. He probably has some idea, right? Okay. Maybe he's a cool guy. So, Ether Lens on melee form Dragon Tails. Actually, going to make it somewhat ranged, right? Yeah. So, it, no, it triples it, the range. It, 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 it is an instant cast still, right? Melee yeah, Dragon it is. Form is, it is. instant yeah. cast. So, he will be able to instantly cast it to stun at like 400 Dyer's range or something. Top top That's actually really cool attack. versus Puck specifically, right? Because yeah. oftentimes you see the Dyer's range stun come out and Puck phase shifts him. I I think approaching what pros do from a point of curiosity like that, where you're like, okay, let me try to figure out why they're doing it, is a really cool way to learn about Dota. Because, man, what you said is so smart. Actually, I'm thinking about it. That, that's pretty good. Wonder if then we're actually going to be able to see that in action, or if we're just going to be seeing really long uh, he, he's going dragon right for the AC. form dragon tails. <laughs> I think he went for this Aether Lens, and like, the idea is cool. And uh -huh. at the same time, like I bet he wishes he was just a bit more tanky that last fight. Sure. And maybe even just having, like, I, what's... Yeah, I guess armor is more important than BKB right now. Yeah, I think so. I think the thing about BKB on the offline Dragonite is you sort of want them to cast some spells on you. Yeah. You sort of want to soak up that damage. I'm not saying BKB is bad necessarily, but in this specific game, I think he's decided he has so many damage sources that he wants them to target him. Mm. Lincoln's picked up for the pop. So he's going to try and put an end to that Dragon Tail reign of madness. He does have Halberd, though. So with the Aether Lens, you can instant yeah. Halberd, instant stun. Yeah, we'll see how good he is. Winter's Curse actually put onto the creep there. That's not what he wanted. And JQ, he'll pay for that mistake. Nothing to say. Going to go for the kill on Boke. Won't be able to get it fast enough. He TPs away. Arnell orbing out as well. Faith Beyond won't be able to pursue. They won't catch Gabby. That could have been very scary, but Jin Q missing on the Winter's Curse. Winter's Curse, uh, since that change, is that heroes only or literally no other unit inside? It's any other unit. Even okay. a neutral creep can proc it. Okay. So, so you know, the combo is if you, uh, you Winter's Curse and you dig up a kobold with your shovel, it extends the duration. <laughs> you... Oh, go to cinema highlights. Oh, that's good stuff right there. What? <laughs> I thought you were just... I, I thought I was going to blow my mind. Nah. With some this is the stuff I think about. <laughs> And a rare mistake for Shinkyo. Actually, something that's cool in this game is that he has a Witch's Blade versus PA with BKB. Yeah. If you hit a BKB unit with Witch's Blade and it doesn't proc, you continue to have the True Strike. So if PA BKBs and you hit him, you will always have True Strike on him until you're into a proc. Yeah. That is fascinating. Rupture being used on both right now. Ame is sitting on him and looks to be able to kill him while he's still silent out. Now they're going to chase after Boomy. Tim's probably wants to just roll back to safety. Oh, he got clipped on the wall. Uh oh. He's going to go ahead and pop his uh, his shard here to try and blink away, and he does. Nicely played. But still, losing their magnets is a big part of their combo. Oh, super. Did Ame not want to hit him there? Like, you can still hit him when he's rolled up, right? Yeah, you can hit him. And he could have stopped the Blink Dagger, but he would have rolled deeper into okay. the base. So, I think he just didn't think about the Blink. Yeah. Honest. But jump in. Two minutes. Oh, he's actually going to be able to get a two-man zone. Oh, he's a little bit of trouble. Oh, the Dagger did 1,400 oh. damage. They're going to be able to finish him off. That's the first life without Gabby having to commit. As long as Armel can get away here, it's a pretty good trade-off. Gabby's now going to commit. Use it to BKB, but he went for the Enchantress. And the Enchantress has the level 20 talent. She's so hard to bring down. Oh, no. TNT.
and see, can Armel get out? No, swept up by the Dragon Flames and the Crypt Swarm at the same time. They buy back on Tim's for this one, but Tim's rolling thunder now up. Let's see if he can cause a little chaos with uh, Boak about to come up as well. And yeah, LGD thinking about retreating. A four and four is not what they want to take. You know what's so weird about this game is that LGD are up 23K gold, but I'm actually really worried for them. Yeah. I clicked on PA. When this Raker comes out, like she did a, f that Bloodseeker died in an instant there mm -hmm. to a dagger and like basically nothing. Just some puck spells. Is it is it just me or? I feel like LGD was winning this game without Ame, and I haven't seen Ame do very much. Like, yeah, maybe he cleaned up certain fights, but like, other than that, uh, fights that they were already winning, he helped them win. But I haven't seen anything very impactful out of him. Yeah, I think Ame, in general, he's a very um, clean up the game, clean up the fight to carry the game player, mm. which isn't inherently bad. Okay. But I agree. I think. Maybe a little bit of his itemization feels a bit weird to me. Like, I don't think he should have finished his Mjolnir this game, as opposed to something that sure. helps him 1v5 a bit more. Like, they weren't low on damage, as you can see from the shield, just dominating. Oh, tempted to go for the Shockwave Skewer back. Nothing to say it was a little bit too fast, though. And, and they are beginning to Radiance hit this tier three tower. tower. Dangerous combination. Radiance Cold Embrace put onto the Death Prophet top. as the ghosts are out. Backdoor protection up for a second here. He does have that skewer cooldown, so it's up again. Yeah, they can go for it again, especially if nothing safe. He starts getting low down, but he popped the cheese just before him. He heals up. He still got the exorcism going, and they have the Magnus currently orchided up. Tim Snow causing a little bit of havoc in the back line. He managed to do nice rolling thunder through most of everybody. Nothing to say. Finally popping his BKB, chasing after Gabby. Really wants to be able to get this kill. Gabby is actually turning around on him with the Satanic heals up just a little bit. And the rest of the team managed to take the mid lane of Barracks. Now LGD looks to be able to get away. Not cleanly, though, they're gonna have to leave Innocence behind. Why falls? 80 seconds for him. They're gonna chase after nothing to say. They don't go no exorcism. No cheese. They're feeling it right now. They do drag it on somebody. Bounce back off the Lotus Orb. They managed to get him out of sight. Look, Gabby, don't take him so much damage. Oh, they actually wins in the 1v1. He takes him down. Now gonna go for Armel as well. Armel managed to phase shift Dual Scepter a little bit more. Can he kill Jin Q? He's gonna be able to jump away to his orb. Gabby's back with a secondary life here, but Ame is seriously cleaning up the C fight. Gets a silent. Gets the shot from Faith Beyond, chasing down more heroes. Armel, he's a liability at this point with how low he is. Boak actually all the way underneath the tower. That's where he managed to get that kill. Ame gets the ultra kill and looks for Gabby, who's hiding away in the trees. He said, please, not me, not me. More buybacks coming in. They're going to use Boak to try and skewer him back to the fountain here. But this double damage blood seeker will not quit. Rampage for Ame. As now, he's going for the Megas. And TNT are left with just two members to try and defend. It's Armel and it's Gabby. Radiance and it's time for them to go. If they want to stop Megas, they have to go soon. A little bit of a poke from Armel. Looks like they're going to have to go for Megas, but Fate Beyond, he's going to force the action first. Managed to get the silence, trying to prevent him from being able to jump back of the fountain, but because of the satanic dispelling off the silence, he does get back to safety. Now jumping in. Oh, he broke and kills the Bloodseeker. He died just like that. It's going to be Megas, but TNC are showing they can still hold. Now going for Faith Beyond. Gabby looking for more of those crits, but it's nothing to say. It was a problem for him. They're focusing on the tanky dragon. Oh, okay, a crit finishes him off. Gives a little bit of bumper to Gabby in heals. They go for another break. Nothing to say. Head the EM death spells. They're going to have to back away. The silence on to Gabby. He has to turn and fight. He has to heal up as much as possible. A cookie, a little bit of distance. He heals up more, but he's psyched up. Damage coming out for the exorcism. Not quite enough. He jumps to the green. He heals more, more. A dagger comes out, but it's not enough. Come Why? Finally the gets the shot that puts him in the dirt. Two minutes for him. Armel looking to be able to kill the Death Prophet here. Boomy sees he's low. He's going to give him the assist, but nothing to say. It's just too damn good. He's too damn fast, and he puts out too much damage. TNT are all going to fall and drop the GG as LGD will finally clean up this game. Wow, what a fight. I think nothing to say in particular this game. He's, he's really proven what a top tier player he is. I think he's the highest MMR in the world right now. He's really showing it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a performance by him. So many.